Did you do something similar to a Ouija board at one time? Yeah, I've done a Ouija board before. I'm sensing that there was some kind of ceremony. I'm hearing chanting and... You took someone's hair? Yeah. Somebody gave me their hair for something. But... For something? Yeah. Okay. You don't have to tell me what it was, but do you recall what it was? So, like a spell or a, mm -hmm. a ritual? Yeah. It was really weird when, uh, when Kim brought up the hair. Someone gave that to me for... Uh, I don't want to go into it, but yeah, it's that's definitely weird that she knows that. I've also been a part of like different rituals. I have a feeling that they were very potent. Yeah, I was at my friend's house. We lit this candle and this huge fireball like shot out of my hand. It's weird, like potent. I don't think Kelly knew what she was dealing with, casting some types of rituals or spells. There's some very similar energy going on here. I feel like with a little bit of guidance, you have something. There's an opening with you. I've had people tell me that before. I think it makes a lot of sense what she's saying. It explains a lot as to like why I feel weird walking into certain rooms and why I know things happen before they happen. Maybe we can prove to you that you might have some kind of abilities yourself? I don't know how you feel about that. I'm willing to try anything at least once, so I'm open. Uh, you're, you're, you're cool. <laughs> I, love, I love that. I love that girl after my own heart. I'm definitely sensing Kelly has psychic abilities herself. I have an idea. So if you would bear with me just a moment. Mm -hmm. Joel? Um, could you go downstairs in, in my purse? There's an outside zipper. I have a ring in there that I, I always have. Okay. Would you mind getting it? When I was speaking with Kelly, I recognized a similar energy to those of my students. People that have the ability, but not understanding that they have it. So it's a ring. Mm -hmm. Do you know what psychometry is? No. Okay. Psychometry is when um, a person holds an object and gets impressions, uh, psychic impressions, energetic impressions. I do this with my students all the time and they are incredibly shocked at the information that comes forward. Are you okay with this? Give it a whirl, as you would say. Sure. When Kim first told me she wanted to try something with me, I really didn't know what to expect at first at all. I've never done anything like that before. You can just hold it however you feel. You will feel the energy. Could be a feeling, an emotion. I don't know why, but um, first thing that came to my head was mother in black hair. OK. My mother passed. She had black hair her whole life. And that's my mom's ring. I carry it all the time. It's my good luck charm. I carry this ring in my purse wherever I go. It's very dear to my heart. And it has my mom's energy on it. In fact, this is the ring that was on my mother's finger when she passed away. Would you do me a favor and ask for any name, please. It's important. I don't know why, but it's John. That's my dad, and he's passed. That's very good. Really? That's amazing, amazing. Do you want to keep going? OK. <laughs> um. So what I would ask you to do now is, it's better when you close your eyes, you get a better vibe. Um, ask for anything they may want to give. Mm -hmm. Something would just kept replaying over and over and over and over and over again in my head, and then I would say it and it would stop. The only thing that I keep seeing is a seaside, like a beach. Oh, 
I have a house across from the beach. And that was my mom's favorite place before she passed away. She lived with me on the beach. I'm like got the goosebumps all over my body right now. So on and off for the last 15 years, I have been the creative director of Beecher's Madhouse, along with Jeff Beecher, who is the owner and creator. And we had an ongoing club inside the hotel for a few years. You know, like how buildings like totally hold energy and you can feel when you're somewhere. It's just, regardless of it being haunted, it, it has a lot of like, people just go there to get wasted. So it has that energy in it too. It's like a party hotel. There was many, many, many experiences in the hotel. So many of our, much of our talent refused to go to the backstage dressing room, refused to be in that hallway behind the stage by themselves. Uh, after a certain time wouldn't go into the theater on their own. And you would hear people walking, you could hear people laughing, you could hear all sorts of stuff that you can choke up to your being in a busy hotel, maybe it's just nothing. And then it would happen all the time when you know no one is in there. And so it, it was like this weird thing where you start to convince yourself it's not happening when secretly you know it really is. People always say that Marilyn Monroe haunts that hotel. I don't believe it's Marilyn Monroe. She made it, she wouldn't still be there. It's like Black Dahlia vibes, like somebody who never quite made it, an extra that got like murdered in there or something. Uh, after we left the, the suite, we went down back to the club and it just continued. It felt like somebody was watching us just your hairs on your body just standing on edge. And we went back up to the room and I just had such a terrible feeling about everything that I was like, we can't stay here. And I didn't even end up staying for the event that I was throwing, we just left. I'm out, I like, didn't want to stay in there. After spending so much time in that hotel and it gets cold and then there's nothing there and you hear things and you think that you're going crazy and or that it's just because it's a busy hotel and they're probably like through air conditioning vents, you're hearing it from other places because of how old the hotel is, but it's not that. It's probably the most haunted hotel I've ever stayed in. My whole life, weird stuff like this has happened to me. Why, what it is about me that makes it easier for th this stuff to happen or for that I even notice it because some people wouldn't, most people wouldn't. When you've been accused of being a Satanist your whole life because of who your father is, you can't help but wonder what it is everyone's talking about. So naturally, I kind of looked into it because I wanted to understand what I was being accused of. Couldn't be further from the truth, but it's it's been a part of my life my whole life. Not by choice. A lot of people, they're way too concrete and way too black and white thinking. Like, you can't see past what they've grown to understand because they're scared. And I'm not. What is the spirit going to do to you? Nothing. Like, where I. And also, I think it's also got a lot to do with the fact that I'm English, where things are so old and have so much history. And living in California, like what is the oldest building? Maybe 50 years old. Maybe if you're really, really, really lucky, you might come across something that's maybe 100 years old. That's just like, that's young in England for a building. Really young. So it's, it's, very, it's very different here.